Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Banyan DNA, a tool for evaluating relationships in your family tree based on shared DNA. Unlike other tools for genetic genealogy, Banyan DNA can analyze complex trees, for example, with pedigree collapse or double cousins. In this tutorial, we will walk through a simple example from Marcia, a fictional adoptee who shares 1104 centimorgans with Karen. With that amount of DNA, Marcia and Karen could be either first cousins or double first cousins. We encourage you to build the tree yourself in the tool while you watch this tutorial to get hands-on experience. There is more than one way to accomplish most tasks in Banyan DNA. This tutorial will show you some of those alternate ways. You will discover more tricks as you learn to use the tool yourself. For more details, please see the documentation on our website at banyandna.com. We access all of our projects from the Banyan DNA dashboard. To start a new project, click the purple button at the top, name your project, optionally select a color, and enter one or more tags, and then click Create Project. You can return to the dashboard at any time by clicking the Banyan DNA logo at the top left. Here we see a card for our Marsha project with the color and tag we selected. Premium subscribers can have up to 50 projects. Colors and tags can help you stay organized when you have multiple projects on your dashboard. Simply click the card to return to your project. There are a few different ways to add people to a project in Banyan DNA. In a new project, you can click the Add Person button in the middle of your project window to create a node for Person 1. Now double-click inside the node to enable editing and type in the name Freddy. Hover over the right side of the node and click the dark shaded Attributes button to bring up the details sidebar. Here you can add or edit the name. I'll add a surname, Jackson, as well as enter birth year. 1950, death year, 2020, and sex. If you scroll down, you'll see some relationship options that we'll explore later, as well as a custom notes field. Click anywhere in the project window to close the sidebar. Note that Freddy's sex and birth and death years now show on his node. These can be turned off in the user settings if you prefer. Now we want to build out Freddy's tree. Hover over Freddy's node again to enable the quick actions menu. Click the add child icon to give him a daughter, name her Karen, and add her birth year, 1975, and sex in the details sidebar. Similarly, add Freddy's mother, Bertha, using the add parent icon. Now add Freddie's spouse, Gloria. Notice that Gloria is not connected to her daughter, Karen, at this point. We can fix that using the lightsaber. Hover over Karen's node, select the dot on the left side, and drag the lightsaber to Gloria's node. The circles will turn purple when a connection is made. I can tidy up by dragging Karen to a new position. We can add people who are not connected to existing people in the tree using the new menu at the top of the screen. This adds the new person to the center of the project window. Notice that person five is stacked directly on top of Freddy, so we'll drag them to a new location. We can name her, name her Iris. Give her a father, Calvin, and Calvin can be connected to Gloria as her father using the lightsaber. This is a good point in our project to save using the button at the top. Banyan DNA does not save projects automatically, so doing this periodically is a good habit to get into. To create a double cousin scenario, we'll add another child to Bertha move him to a new location, and name him Eric. 
Note that the green lines from Calvin to his daughters and the orange lines from Bertha to her sons overlap. I can nudge Eric over just a little bit to make the relationships clearer. We can add Iris as Eric's spouse using the sidebar. In the spouses section, I will start typing Iris's name, select her when she's pulled up, and click the plus sign. The last thing we want to do to set up this tree is to give Eric another spouse named Hazel. Now we're ready to set up our hypotheses. Recall that we're trying to determine whether Marcia is a double cousin to Karen, that is to say, the child of Eric and Iris, or a single cousin who was the child of Eric and Hazel. We need to add these two hypothetical children to the tree. We could add a child to one parent and connect the other parent using the lightsaber, as we've done before, but there's a more direct way. We can add a child to a family, that is, both parents, by right-clicking on the line connecting the parents and adding a child to the family. We're going to do the same thing for Eric and Hazel. We want to convert these two new people to hypothesis locations. We can do this using the Quick Actions menu. Hover over Person 9, click Convert to Hypothesis Location, and Confirm. You can also create hypotheses in the Person Side Panel. Try that for Person 10. Open the Side Panel, click Convert to Hypothesis Location at the top, and Confirm. Notice that each hypothesis gets a unique number based on the order it was converted. The default name for hypotheses is Jane Doe, but you can rename all of the hypothesis locations at once by typing the new name, Marcia, into one of the fields. The last thing we need to do before we're ready to analyze our tree is to add the shared DNA amount between Marcia and Karen. You can do this directly in the tree by selecting Marcia, hovering over Karen, and typing the centimorgan amount. 1104 into the DNA field that appears. You can see and edit the shared DNA amounts in the match data side panel and add new matches here as well. Let's save again now to make sure we don't lose our work. This is a good spot in our tutorial to showcase some of the tree analysis features in Banyan DNA. Here, I've switched to a tree that has more details on each person, like sex, birth and death years, and surnames. At the top of the window, you'll find a set of highlight modes. We can highlight all of the DNA testers in the tree, in this simple example, just Karen. We can highlight by sex, so men are in blue and women in red. A rainbow spectrum is used for birth years and also for death years. Finally, our premium users have access to a custom filter that can be configured to your own specifications. Here, I've chosen to highlight all of the women born between 1945 and 1955 who could have been of age to be Marcia's mother. The prune mode de-emphasizes people who are not relevant to the DNA analysis. You see that Hazel is shaded out because she's not genetically related to the DNA match Karen. There's also an anonymize mode that can either truncate names after the first space, generally showing only given names, or replace the names entirely with person numbers. Our premium users also have access to the focus mode, which can highlight either lineages, that is all of the ancestors and descendants of the person you select, or someone's nuclear families. So, the family in which they are a child, and also the family in which they're a parent. One last thing, you can change the colors of any of the lines by right-clicking on them. There are eight colors from which to choose. Are we ready to run some calculations? Open up the calculation side panel. Note that our premium users can store their 10 most recent calculations, while free users are limited to one. Click New Calculation. Calculations are numbered by default, but you can name them anything you like. 
let's name this one is Marcia, a double one C to Karen. Next, indicate how many trials to run. A trial is a computer simulation of the DNA inheritance customized to the tree that you've built. We recommend that you do at least 1,000 and you can do up to 100,000. More calculations will take more time. For this example, let's do 5,000. And click Run. You'll see the Banyan DNA animation play while the analysis is running. Let's switch back to the tree for a moment to refresh our memories. Hypothesis 1 has Marcia as a double first cousin to Karen, while Hypothesis 2 has them as single first cousins. We can return to our list of calculations using the sidebar and to any given calculation in the list by clicking on it. In this case, of course, we have just the one calculation. Banyan DNA assigns each hypothesis a relative probability, which should all sum to 100%. Our hypothesis 1 has a 13% chance of being true, while hypothesis 2 has an 87% chance. Thus, it is more likely, based on their shared DNA, that Marcia and Karen are single first cousins and not double first cousins. Each hypothesis is also given a quality score based on the overall fit of the DNA matches. If all of your hypotheses have poor quality scores, it's possible that there's a better hypothesis that you did not consider or that there's an error in your tree. You can expand each hypothesis for a match by match analysis. This table summarizes how much DNA each pair of people actually share, the expected average given their relationships in the tree, the ideal range of shared DNA, and the number of standard deviations, which is a measure of how far off the real DNA amount is from the ideal. Smaller is better with standard deviations. You can use this information to understand which matches in your tree might be misplaced. Congratulations, now you're ready to use Banyan DNA on your own.